steps to actually make it happen. If you follow the development in uh, the technology ecosystem globally, you will see that LinkedIn, for instance, projected that in 2001, there were just about 5.5 million tech jobs in the world, in the whole world. So the workforce for technology in the world in the year 2001 was just 5.5 million people. By this year, 2023, the workforce for technology has got up to 85.64 million people globally. 85.64 million people. Uh, though a significant portion of that is still very skewed when you look at the gender balance, where women in 2026 were just 26% of the total uh, technology workforce uh, globally. By 2020, that moved to 26%. This same workforce is now being projected to grow by 2028 by 35%. So there's a 25% growth that is expected by the year 2028. And some of the growth, as you can see on the screen, in terms of the projection, 2001, like I said earlier, it was 5.5 million. 2023 was 85.64 million. By 2028, in, in terms of the number, we're expecting that there will be 115.4 million uh, people working within the technology ecosystem globally. And you can see the breakdown. For those of you who have been paying attention and particularly interested in being part of this ecosystem, perhaps becoming a, a contributor to it, you know, finding decent jobs, whether it's in Nigeria or all over the world, you will see the breakdown is expected as software developers and engineers by this year, we have about 24.2 million of them globally. By 2028, it is projected that there will be 33.4 million software developers globally. Information security analysts is, is expected to grow from 4.2 million to 6.6 million. And if you look at the numbers that we're projecting, web developers will move from 2.3 uh, million people working in the tech ecosystem to 3.7 million people. Database administrators will move from 1.2 in 2023 to 1.8 in 2028. And you can see the numbers there. Information technology and system managers will move from 0.8 to 1.2 million. This is the projection that we're expecting to see globally uh, you know, by 2028. But the reality is that despite this, the size of this workforce, and we live in a world where so many people are still unemployed, there's about 4.5 million unfilled tech jobs globally at the minute. You know, as at this year, there's a massive gap in demand for tech talent and actually the supply and availability of tech talent globally. And you can see the breakdown in software development. There's gap for about 1 million people. And these are well-paying jobs. If you follow the story of individuals, both within Nigeria and outside, that have decided to take part and be part of the ecosystem, those who work for companies within the technology space are some of the well-paid individuals globally. So there's about one million software development job at the minute that is currently unfulfilled. Cloud computing, for instance, there's 1.5 million unfilled jobs. Uh, cybersecurity currently has about 1.8 million unfilled jobs. And artificial intelligence, which is becoming a major, major phenomenon, has about 2.2 million unfilled positions. Where does this take us? There is a significant opportunity for Nigeria to actually become a major source of workforce uh, for the technology ecosystem. Not only for us to be able to export, but because as we continue to grow and accomplish our objectives, particularly the objectives of diversifying our economy, as set out by, by our, our president, um, we expect that even locally there's going to be significant shortage. But as we prepare for this shortage, as technology become a major part of our, of our economy and society, we must also take advantage of the fact that our population is significantly young. 60% of the Nigerian population are young people under the age of 25, which means we have a unique opportunity not only to groom a strong workforce locally, but to also become a net exporter of technology talent. Uh, to, to, the rest, to, to the rest of the world.
If you follow development again in places like Europe, where most European countries are seeing aging population, but also at the same time, their population is declining. So they're going to look to countries like Nigeria for supply of technical talent that can help to continue to drive the application of technology. And it is our belief, based on data that has been projected by LinkedIn, that Nigeria can actually fill about 22% of the current global shortage in technology talents globally. And we believe that the opportunity that exists for us gives us the chance to be able to participate in global financial technology ecosystem. We can contribute 0.15 million people to that ecosystem. Same for data science, which is growing significantly thanks to artificial intelligence, but also 0.2 million to information security, which is going to become extremely important as technology continues to permeate uh, every aspect of our society and life. And most importantly, because technology is also driven by software, Nigeria alone can contribute 0.5 million people to the shortage that we currently have in the software development workforce uh, globally. And this is why uh, at the ministry, but also within this government, we've decided to project Nigeria as a tech nation that it has become in the last 10 years, but to also invest significantly in driving that agenda and ensuring that we can put programs in place that can leverage our strengths and resources to drive us to becoming the tech nation that we actually would like to be. By becoming a tech nation, we can continue to diversify our economy, strengthen the complexity of our economy, and ensure that we continue to grow. And as we continue to grow, we can create job opportunities for our teaming youth, thereby ensuring that they can contribute to economic development in our nation. You've seen in the last probably less than 100 days, we've launched so many programs, including the 3MTT, which we're kicking off today. And so what is 3MTT? 3MTT is simply building on everything I've said so far to build the workforce of the future, not only for Nigeria, but, but the world. Nigeria is known to be a major supplier of tech talent. We are known to be a major supplier of talents generally, but we want to cement that position and ensure that our young people, but also mid-age people, can actually benefit from the opportunity that this has to offer. This is why we've set an ambitious target for ourselves to train 3 million technical talents all across the country. You can be rest assured that this is a program that is being managed without any bias. Everyone that's applied to be part of this program, as long as you're part of those 3 million people that gets to apply, will get the opportunity to be trained. What you're going to see, however, is that for us to judiciously manage this process, we will break this down using a novel approach that we've created, just to ensure that this is not just a program that says we want to train and we just train, without ensuring that the people that are being trained actually get quality education out of it without ensuring that the people that are being trained actually can find jobs. So we've developed a system to help us learn as we roll out this program, to help us ensure that we're using our budget judiciously. And that approach is what we call the 1 to 10 to 100. The idea behind the 1 to 10 to 100, which is a methodology that we're applying to all the programs we're running in the ministry, is that whatever we set out to do, we start by testing out and prototyping with 1%. 1% in this case speaks to 30,000 people of the 3 million. And this is what we're going to be doing in the first three months. So we will focus on the first batch of people. So if by any means you're not part of the first uh, 1%, this does not imply that you're not going to benefit from this program. But the first set of people that will benefit from the uh, program for the next three months with the, with the initial 1%. By deploying this 1%, we hope to learn significantly in terms of what we should be doing to improve the program, what we should be doing to ensure that the people that we're training are actually getting the required skill sets that can make them employable, but also what we should be doing to ensure that employers actually trust this program and can recruit from this program. So that's what we're going to do with the 1%. And that lesson is what we're then going to take into the second batch, which will start in February next year. And that's going to take us to 10%, which is where we're going to focus on training 300,000 people. Right? These 300,000 people, again, will be selected based on clusters from 
all over the country, all the 36 states, including the federal capital territory, will benefit from this. So as we launch this in February, we will learn, and this is what we call the pilot. This is the real pilot. We will learn the necessary things that we must take into consideration to be able to scale this program to 3 million. And once we do that for another three to six to nine months, we will then go all out to deploy and aim to achieve our target of 3 million. I'd like to state once again, the motive behind this program is our understanding of the opportunity that exists both locally and across the globe for our young people to truly participate in the global economy. The opportunities are there, as you can see from the statistics I've shared. It is our responsibility as government to empower you to ensure that you have the foundation that can give you the opportunity to be part of the global economy. And that's what this program is about. I'd like to iterate that this is not a program that is going to be sharing laptops. We've heard so, much, so many stories. We won't share laptops. The one thing you can ensure that we'll do is we will work with partners that will make it possible for you to be able to get loans to acquire your laptop as and when needed. In terms of how we're going to deploy the program, my colleague will come uh, shortly to talk you through the practical details. But we are working with partners, partners from across the country that can also provide their facility. A lot of these facilities will come with computers and internet access, and you'll be able to leverage this facility to learn as you go. As you continue to learn, our program will bring opportunities to you for internships where some of you guys can start to apply the skill set that you've acquired so that you can polish up and, and ensure that you actually have a good understanding in the, in the, in the career path that you've chosen. In addition to that, our partners will also run clusters across the country where you will get a chance to be with other people like yourself that are learning, that are part of the three entity program that are within your locality. And this is where you will get the fantastic opportunity to continue to build with them. This is a program that we're building together. And I need you to understand that our goal is to ensure that this can serve your purpose. And that's the only goal that we have here. For us to get it right, it will require your commitment. For us to get it right, it would require that we all build this together. As we're building, we're learning from it. We're making it perfect with a single purpose of ensuring that the young Nigerians who are passionate about finding a place for themselves in the global economy are given the chance, but most importantly, that Nigeria become a tech nation that it can indeed uh, be, be, be recognized for. So at this point, I'll invite my colleague Fola to talk more about the details. But before we get into that, actually, I think there's something I'd like to show you, you know, which is the overwhelming support that we've gotten from across the country. For those of you guys who have been following me online, I've talked a lot about this. In less than 30 days, we've had about 1.52 million applications. This is quite significant for any country in the world. Bear in mind that this is a program that is still ongoing. Application is still going to be open. So people are allowed to, to apply. So as you can see on the screen, we've had about 1.5 million applications. We also put out applications for those who may be willing to support partners, right? Those who may be willing to provide uh, support services to us. And we've received over 27,000 applications from providers and over 2,000 applications from training partners. These are people that we expect will add value to this program. And when you look at the second uh, graph that you can see, you see from Canada alone, we had over 162,000 applications. As so we had over 50,000 applications. Lagos had about 87,000 applications. This is how much interest that exists in this program. And you can see there are people from across the country that are willing to be part of the global workforce for education, uh, for technology rather. And it doesn't stop there. If you break this down into local government areas, there are local government areas that many of you may not even know that we've seen significant applications from. You know, you can see places like E4 which is my own state, about 2,000 applications just from E4 only. You can see places like Funtua, which is one of my favorite places uh, today, uh, with also over six, almost 7,000 applications. You know, if I continue to touch on it, you can see Batagawa had over 2,700, almost 3,000 applications. And that's what we've seen. This is not a program that is skewed to the urban, urban areas only. This is a program that has received attention from all across the nation. And you can also see what we've done. We've mapped this on the senatorial district so that we can get support from our leaders in ensuring that we actually deliver this program well. Of course, the most painful reflection has always been what we know. Uh, there's still very 
uh, overwhelming application from male as compared to female, but we still had good applications as well. This is over uh, 400,000 applications from women across the country. If we go into the data analytics and we look at uh, uh, additional details, we saw so many exciting things, and these things are what will empower us to actually be able to help and deliver these services appropriately. A lot of unemployed people, over half a million people that want to be part of this. And we hope that by the virtue of them being part of this program, the technology workforce, and find gainful, gainful employment. You can see students, quite a number of them, self-employed people. Uh, and if you continue to break it down, on that age overview, we had mostly between 26 to 37 year olds applying, almost almost seven seven hundred and twenty or seven hundred and fifteen thousand people applied in that category, and you can see we even had a lot of people uh, around the age of uh, uh, eighteen and below. You know, a lot of people above forty five as well willing to learn. So this is not just something for the very very young people. Uh, you can see in terms of education overview. We had so many people looking to be part of this who have a bachelor's degree, which is exciting. We hope that by being part of this program, they also get the opportunity to find good jobs and contribute to their family, but also society uh, at large as well. Uh, you can also see what people want to learn. Uh, the bulk of the people want to, want to become software developers, which I think is an exciting area. The, the gap there is significant. We think if you become one of the greatest software engineers, finding something to do will always not be a problem for you. And you can see the breakdown up to DevOps, game development, cloud computing. These are the sort of things that we've seen under this program. We are extremely excited, and we hope that you're as excited as we are. So at this point, I'll invite Fola to join us to talk more about the details and how this is going to run uh, over the coming months. Thank you so much. Fola, over to you.